Welcome back. This is Mr. Tremaine with Geometry. We are in Chapter 7, Section 4, talking about applying properties of similar triangles. So the objective today is that the students, you guys, will be able to use properties of similar, similar triangles to find segment lengths. Right, so this is something we've been doing consistently, but we're going to throw in a couple different theorems to solve for sides of similar triangles. All right, so artists often use similarity and proportionality to give paintings an illusion of depth. All right, I'm sure quite a few of you have probably done that in like your basic drawing class with Mr. Prawley. All right, so the first theorem we're going to talk about is the triangle proportionality theorem. And what this theorem says if a line parallel to a side, so if we look here, right, we have line x, y. All right, if that is parallel, I'm actually going to fix that line there. If that is parallel to this segment AC, all right, then it divides those two sides portion, proportionally. All right, meaning that BX would be proportional to XA and BY would be proportional to YC, all right? Or would be corresponding with YC, and then those two ratios would be proportional. Okay, so they gave this example here, right? Notice two parallel lines. So therefore, right, create a ratio with FH and HD and a ratio with FG and GE. All right, and that's what they did right here. And they set those two equal because we know they're proportional. All right? And then the converse of that theorem says that if those ratios are the same, then you could conclude that that line is parallel. All right. So number one here, find the length of each segment in exercise one and two. All right, so for this example here, I see right away that these lines are parallel. Right, I see that they're parallel. Therefore, right, I know that these sides right here, PS and SQ, should be corresponding. All right, and then I know NR and QR should be corresponding. Therefore, these two should be proportional. Okay meaning that the ratio should be equal. So substitute in your values. PS is 6, SQ is 7. NR is 12, RQ, we don't know. Cross, multiply, and solve. 6 equals, oh sorry, 6X equals 84. Divide by 6 such that X equals, what do we get? 14. All right, so therefore, side RQ equals 14. All there is to it. Next one. Once again, you see that these two are parallel. What does that mean? That KM and JM form a ratio. So KM over JM. And LN over NJ form a ratio. And we know these should be proportional. All right, so 20 over 16 would be equal to 38 over, we don't know, JN, so X. Therefore, 20X equals uh, 16 times 38, which is 608. Divide that by 20. So it's at x equals 30.4. All there is to it. Then this last one, number three here. Show that TU and WX are parallel. So to show that these are parallel, we know that once again, those sides, TW... And t VW, so TW over VW, should be proportional to my other two sides. So TW, then UX, and VX. So UX and VX. All right. So 
TW is 18. Over. 45. And then 6 over 15. Here, we'll actually do this here. All right, so 18 over 45. 6 over 15. Uh, 18 over 45 can simplify to 6 over 15. All right, this, both of those can simplify to 2 over 5. 2 over 5. Therefore, right, these would be parallel, right, because those two are proportional, right? So therefore, we would know that UT would be parallel. Whoops. UT would be parallel to XW. All right, moving on here. All right, exercise four and five. Set up a ratio and substitute values from the picture to find each length. All right, so this is just the same stuff here. All right, so you can go ahead and pause the video, try these on your own, and then I'll show you how to do them. Okay, we know these two sides are parallel. Therefore, create your ratio. SM, QM. Should be congruent or should be proportional to. We did SM, so we do SL and LR or RL. There we go. Substitute in your values 8 over 10 equal to X, because we don't know this side, or 15. Cross multiply and solve. After I cross multiply, I get 10X equals. 8 times 15, which is, I believe, 120. Divide by 10, such that x equals 12. So I know that length SL would be 12. Or LS, I guess. Then we need to solve for BK, right? BK, this guy right here. All right, once again, I see parallel, parallel. Therefore, I should have my ratio, right? AK over BK. That should be proportional to AJ over CJ. Substitute in your values. AK is 1 over BK. We don't know. Call it X equals 1 over 4. Therefore, we cross multiply, right? And we see that x should equal 4. All there is to it. All right, the next theorem we're talking about is the triangle bisector theorem. And what this theorem states is that if I have an angle bisector of a triangle and divides the opposite side into two segments, all right, those two segments should be proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. All right? So in other words, the ratio for BY over <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, BY over YC, 15 over 9, should be the same as the proportion of BA over CA. Okay, and that's exactly what they have written here. All right, so continuing on here. All right. So I notice this is an angle bisector, right? Because these angles are congruent. So therefore, set up your ratios. I would always start with the side that it bis or the side that it uh, splits. So, EF proportional to FG. That would be equal to or proportional to the side that's with EF, which is ED over GD. Therefore, substitute and solve. X over X plus 2 equals 8 over 12. Cross multiply here such that 12X would equal 8 times X plus 2. Therefore, 12X 
equals 8x plus 16. Subtract 8x. Such that 4x equals 16. Divide by 4. Such that x equals 4. However, am I done? No, because I need to find each length. And I need to find EF and FG. So therefore, EF would just be 4. FG would be 4 plus 2, which is 6, right? So EF equals 4. And FG equals 6. And then number seven, RV and TV. That's what we're trying to find. Once again, we see an angle bisector here. Therefore, I know those opposite sides, 16, will create a ratio with y plus 3. So 16 over y plus 3. I'm going to set that equal to the side that goes to 16 is RS, which is 40 over 3y, which is RV. Cross, multiply, and solve. So, 48y equals 40 times y plus 3. We're going to distribute here such that 48y equals 40y plus 120. Subtract 40y to both sides. I'm going to continue up here. Such that I'd get 8y equals 120. Divide by 8 to get y by itself, and I see that y would equal 15. Now, am I done? Nope, because I need to find RV and TV. So RV, RV plug in 3, 15, you get 3 times 15, which is 45. TV, plug in 15, substitute in 15, such that you get 15 plus 3, which is 18. Final answer. All right. You guys should feel pretty confident on these ones. Okay, so we're going to skip this slide. Uh, you can pause the video and try them on your own if you would like. All right, we're going to skip this slide because I feel like we're pretty confident on those. And then to the exit ticket. Okay. For the exit ticket, you only need, to, yes, 32 through 34. So we're doing all three of these, all right? So go ahead, pause the video. Try these on your own to see if you can get them right. All right, let's check. So once again, to get these parallel, to show that these are parallel, I know that these sides, US and SR, should be proportional with VT and TR, okay? So... 20 over SR should equal 16 over TR. So let's plug in those values and check them. So the letter A, 20 over 12, you can check. All right. So you guys, I set it up for you, right? You should be able to set that up and sub plug in SR. Substitute in SR. And then substitute in TR. All right. In triangle ABC, the bisector of angle A divides ABT, or excuse me, angle B. Angle A divides BC into segments with length 16 and 20. All right, so give yourself a visual here. You have triangle. That was a terrible triangle. You have triangle. There we go. A, B, C, where angle A divides BC into two segments, and it says it's a bisector, actually. It says bisector, but it's split in two segments with length 16 and 20. AC is 25. Which of these could be the length of BC or of AB, which is this length right here? Remember, once again, set up your ratios. So you'd get 16 over 20. 
equals the side that we don't know, which is AB, called X, over 25. Then you cross, multiply, and solve. Okay, you should be able to do that on your own. All right, moving on to 34. On the map, 1st Street and 2nd Street are parallel. That's pretty important information. 1st Street and 2nd Street are parallel. What is the distance from City Hall? City Hall is right here. To 2nd Street along Cedar Road. So it looks like this distance right here. So what I would do is why wouldn't we just keep creating the shapes that we've been working with? Triangles, right? So let's create our triangle shape. Boom. There's my triangle. There's my two parallel lines, right? Everyone can kind of see them as they extend this way. Okay. So in order to find that Cedar Street length, right, this whole length here, first thing that we have to find is what is this length right here so set up your ratio whoops x over 2.4 right which are these two guys right here equals 2.1 over 2.8 cross multiply and solve such that 2.8 x equals 2.1 times 2.4 divided by 2.8 or 2 and 8 tenths such that x equals 1 and 8 tenths now is that my answer no that is what x is right here so therefore what is that length from city hall to the intersection of 2nd Street and Cedar. All right, you should be able to figure that out. All right, that's it for Chapter 7, Section 4. Here's your homework assignment. It'll be posted on Shobi. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Mr. Tremaine, signing off.